exercise 13.8, basic net present value analysis. Sean Larner paid $18,000 for 900 common shares of Acme Company on January 2nd, four years ago. Larner received an 80 cent per share dividend on the shares at the end of each year for four years. At the end of four years, he sold the shares for 22.5. Larner's goal is to earn a minimum return of 12% on all his investments. Required. Did Larner earn 12% return on the shares? Use the net present value method and the general format shown in Exhibit 13.1. Round all computations to the nearest whole dollar. So we're going to solve this in a number of different ways. So let's look at our timeline. What did we do? We bought $18,000 worth of shares and we uh, received a dividend payment of $720. 80 cents per share, 900 shares. $720 per year and at the end of the four years we sold them for $22,500 and we require a 12% rate of return. That's our story. Did we get it? Well, if we're going to do it as the uh, as uh, Exhibit 13.1 shows, the first entry we have is the present value of our cash inflows. So we have to calculate the present value of our cash inflows. In Excel, we can do that. Uh, it would be equals net present value 0.12 because that is our required rate of return. 720, 720, 720, and in the final year 23, 220 because we're getting our 22.5 and the 720. And once we hit enter we'll find that we get 16,486. Our initial investment is 18,000 so our net present value as we see is negative 1514 because we have a negative net present value we did not achieve 12 percent our answer is no now we could have solved this on the calculator as well so let me show you how to solve it using the calculator what do we know we know that our future value is 22,500 we know that our n is equal to 4. Our iy is equal to 12. And our payment is equal to 720. So we can compute present value and we will get 16486. Uh, but that is, uh, well, actually, it's, it'll, the calculator will return negative, but that just means. Uh, um, in this case, uh, these are all cash inflows, so it's positive. So our net present value is our 16,486 minus our initial investment of 18,000 will equal negative 1514 with the same answer that we got with Excel. Now, we can do it that way to get net present value, but this is easier if we calculate, if we look at this as a bond and we calculate what the yield to maturity is on this bond, we'll find that we can compare our result with the 12% right away. Follow me on this. This is actually very easy. So to calculate it directly without going through a lot of, uh, a lot of all of, you calculate one thing minus this, do that, watch this. What's our present value? Our present value is negative 18,000. What's our future value? Our future value is 22.5. What is our n? Our n is equal to 4. What is our payment? Our payment is equal to 720. All you need to do now is compute i, y, and you'll find that this, if this were modeled as a bond, this is a bond with a yield to maturity of 9.43%. Did we achieve our 12%? No, we achieved 9.43%. And the answer is no. So you could have done it this quickly as opposed to going all the way around three ways to solve it using Excel using a calculator or heading heading to it directly as you get better at looking at these problems you'll find that there's multiple ways to get to the same answer there's 13.8 exercise 13.9 internal rate of return and net present value Scotia family health team is investigating purchasing an ultrasound machine for use in its patient clinic the machine would cost $97,900, including invoice cost, freight, and the training of employees to operate it. Scotia has estimated that the new machine would increase the company's cash flows, net of expenses, 
by 17,000 per year. The machine will have a nine year useful life with no expected salvage value. Let me see if we got that on the timeline right. Uh, we're going to spend 97.9 today over a nine year period, which will generate $17,000 in cash flow per year for the 17 years with doesn't look like any salvage value. So there's the timeline. Required, number one, compute the machine's IRR rounded to one decimal place. So we're going to just use the calculator in this, uh, in this problem because it's, it's really easy to do. N is equal to nine. Future value, we're told, no salvage value is equal to zero. Present value is equal to negative 97,900, cash outflow, right? And our PMT, our payment, is equal to 17,000. And all we need to do now is compute IY, and we will get 10%. Look how quick that was, nice and direct, right? Number two, compute the machine's net present value using a discount rate of 10%. Why do you have a zero net present value? Well, I'll tell you why we have a zero net present value. If the internal rate of return is 10%, and we use the net present value disc a discount rate for NPV of 10%, we're going to get zero because that is exactly the internal rate of return. But let's go through the process anyways. Net present value at 10%. So what do we need? We need our N, which we know is equal to 9. We need our future value, which we know is equal to zero. We need our IY, in this case, is equal to 10. And we need our PMT, which is equal to 17,000. And we're going to compute PV. And for PV, we'll get negative 97,903, rounding off, so that our net present value is equal to 97,903 minus 97,900. You could say that's roughly zero. There's a difference of three, but for rounding errors, we can basically call it zero. And finally, question number three. Suppose that the new machine would increase the company's annual cash flows, net of expenses, by only 15,000 per year. Under these conditions, compute the IRR rounded to one decimal place. So uh, we need to calculate IRR. Our N remains at 9, our future value remains at 0, our present value remains at negative 97,9, but our PMT, our payment, now is 15,000. So it's the same thing in number 1, except the payment goes from 17 to 15, and we're going to compute IY, and we will get 6.96% they want to round it off to one decimal place, that would be 7. Why 7%? Because the 6 would force the 9 to a 0, the 0 would force the 6 to a 7. There you go. And there's exercise 13.9. Exercise 13.10, Uncertain Future Life. Learning Objective 3. Willard Excavating Services has invested in certain equipment that cost the company $247,760. The equipment ex is expected to generate cash inflows of $40,000 each year. Required, how many years will the equipment have to be used in order to provide the company with a 12% return on its investment? So what we're looking here is for a net present value to equal zero at 12%, what uh, to cover this cost what how many years would it actually take so i've modeled it here we are going to spend two hundred and forty seven thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars our roi is twelve percent it'll generate uh, uh, forty thousand in uh, cash inflows but we don't know what our n is we know everything else we know what our present value is we know our future value is zero we know our iy and we know our payment but we don't know when well if we know all that our PV is negative 247,760. Our payment is 40,000. Our IY is 12. Our future value is zero. All we have to do is compute N. Didn't know you could do that, right? Compute N. And we would get 11.9984 which is equal to 12 years. That's 1310. 
As you can see, these questions are rather easy and juvenile. I leave the rest to you.